if you have been paying attention to open source large language models, you probably have noticed there has been an explosion of new models every day in the last few months. It all started with Alpaca, then there were models like Wakunia, GPT for all, and Open Assistant. Now, for all of these models, there is an unsung hero, and that's Meta or Facebook. They were the ones who released the initial Llama models, although the weights are still not publicly available, but they got leaked. And as, as a result, we have all these uh, amazing large language models. Now, there has been efforts to recreate Llama models because Llama models cannot be used for commercial purposes. Now, one of the earlier approach was to recreate the data set. Uh, so if you remember, there was a project called Arat Pajama from Together who actually assembled a data set of 1.2 trillion tokens. So now, so far, the only thing missing is the Llama weights that can be used commercially. That's where this new project comes into play. So today, I'm going to show you this new project called Open Llama, and it's an open reproduction of Llama. For Llama model, we already know the architecture, but somebody had to actually go and retrain it. That's what this project is doing. All right, so in this work, they are releasing a 7 billion uh, parameter Open Llama model that has been trained on 200 billion tokens. You might be thinking, wait, uh, Llama was originally trained on 1.3 trillion tokens and that will be correct that's why they are saying it's an early release of a public preview so they are actually retraining the model with much larger data set and it will be hopefully available pretty soon and this project is already releasing the model with sent by torch and tax uh, format so you can actually use this if you want so let's go over the training data set and the training process. So in this case, they are actually trying to replicate uh, the training uh, process and the training hyperparameters, just like the original Llama paper. So in, uh, for example, they're using exactly the same architecture, the same context length, same number of training steps, the learning rate schedule and optimizer. The only difference is since they don't really have access to the original data, so they are using a part of the Red Pajama data set. As I showed you, Red, Red Pajama is 1.2 trillion tokens, but this is just using a subset uh, for the initial training. Now, as a part of the report, they're actually including their training loss, which actually smoothly goes down. Now, let's look at the evaluation that they have provided. Just one thing, I'm not going to be showing you any demos yet for this project because it was just released and I don't really have the hardware yet to run this locally. Uh, but what they have done is they use this uh, uh, language model evaluation harness. So it's basically a protocol uh, to evaluate the performance of language models. And then they compare the results with the original Llama paper. Apart from uh, the Llama comparison, they are also providing comparison with GPT-J. Uh, which is a 6 billion parameter model trained uh, by a Luther AI. So before looking at the evaluation, uh, we need to keep something in mind. The Llama model was trained on 1 trillion tokens. A GPT J was trained on 5 billion or 500 billion tokens, whereas Open Llama in the current form is trained on 200 billion tokens. Uh, the training data side comparison is critical when we're going to be looking at the results. Now, here's the table of comparison. So, in the first column is a number of benchmark data sets on which the performance was evaluated. And then you have GPT, uh, GPT-J, uh, the Llama original Llama 7B, and now the open Llama 7B uh, preview model. Now, if you look at the table overall, the results of the Llama 7B and Open Llama are very comparable. Uh, there are definitely a few cases in which it uh, doesn't perform as good as Llama 7B. So, for example, if you look at this model or this model, for those two data set, uh, the original Llama performs better than the Open Llama. However, there are several cases, for example, on this Arc Easy data set, that uh, the open llama model actually outperforms the original uh, uh, llama model. 
there are a few other cases as well uh, where you can see that uh, the performance of this model is definitely better than the original model. So let's say here's another example. Now this is significant because if you think about it, uh, the model is being trained with only 20% of the data that was used for training uh, the original Llama model. Now this shows you that with well-crafted and carefully curated data set, uh, these models can actually uh, perform really good even if the training data side is uh, much smaller. Now the great thing about this project is they are already releasing the weights of the model. So you don't really have to request anything. They are on Hugging Face Hub. So if you go to Hugging Face Hub, uh, it's under the OpenML Research. I believe it's a project out of uh, UC Berkeley. Now, if you go to files and versions, so there are two different model files. One is uh, this easy ML format, and the other one is the Hugging Face uh, normal PyTorch format, so you can see them here. Now, if you're using the easy ML platform, then uh, you don't really need the uh, Lama uh, tokenizer and weights because they have retrained the whole thing from scratch. Uh, for using weights in the transformer library, which is on the hacking face using PyTorch, so uh, you can actually use the transformer uh, package. So in this case, uh, from the transformer package, you will actually need the Llama for causal LM and the Llama tokenizer. But instead of uh, giving it the uh, weights or delta weights of the original Llama, a model, you will simply provide these new weights to this model, right? And similar is for the tokenizer. The only diff the only thing that you need to be careful about is uh, that they use beginning of beginning of a sentence token during training. So ID equal to one is actually a reserve token now. So you need to append that. But other than that, the configuration will remain exactly the same because it's using the exactly uh, the same architecture. Uh, you don't really need to change anything at all. You will be just loading different weights. Now, as I alluded to in the beginning, this is actually a preview model. So it's not a fully trained model yet. Uh, they plan to train and this model on the entire Red Pajama data set. So that is going to be 1.2 trillion tokens. And the best part about this whole project, which I'm really uh, excited about, that they are also training a much smaller 3 billion uh, model in hope of facilitating uh, large language model usage in low resource use cases. So with a 3 billion um, parameter model, you probably will be able to run this on a consumer hardware without the need for, for um, expensive GPUs. So if that actually works, I see a lot of different use cases where this model can be actually used. So this video was a little different because I don't really have a demo to show you or to compare its performance with uh, other models out there. But I think it's significant because with this model, now you can actually have a baseline model uh, where other models can be trained on top of without worrying for, uh, whether you can use it for commercial purposes or not. It's a pretty open license, so you can actually build commercial products on top of it. I have been covering a lot of uh, open source large language models lately. And one of the comments that I see repeatedly is that these models are not, are not as good as a chat GPT or chat GPT or chat GPT-4 are the best models out there. Uh, I don't think anybody actually dispute that, but the importance of these uh, open source large model models is twofold. For one, if you are concerned about data privacy, you can run them locally. The second, which I think um, is more exciting, is you can retrain these large mod language models or fine tune them on your very specific uh, business use case. And they will actually outperform these much bigger models because these smaller models will be task specific. And that is, I think, the most exciting part about them. If you guys have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. Um, I'll try my best to respond to them. As always, if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't. If you have subscribed, please consider pushing that bell notification button so that you get uh, a ping every time I, I upload a video. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.